Hello everyone, Brian Tomaszewski here. Welcome to this video on data classification for geographic visualization. In this video, I will teach you about core ideas related to creating thematic maps with numerical information that can help you with your use of geographic information systems or GIS software tools. Before we start, I just wanted to briefly mention about two general ideas about data classification in thematic maps. The first is the idea of a classed map, or where raw data values are first assigned to groups or classes. And in turn, those classes are then depicted on a geographic map. In this example, you see data for a given topic of interest that has been assigned into different data classes. Classed maps are very good at showing statistical differences within a data set, such as comparison of averages or standard deviations. By contrast are unclassed maps. This is simply where raw data values are depicted on a map. Here we see the same data set, but now shown as an unclassed map. Unclassed maps are good at showing general patterns within a data set. Note too the difference in how the legends for each map are created. For more information about the differences between classed and non-class thematic maps, take a look at some of the links I have provided in the comments section of this video. For the rest of this video, however, I'm going to talk about the ideas behind classed maps as these are very commonly used in geographic information systems or GIS software like ArcGIS Pro or the open source tool QGIS. Three of the most common methods of data classification are equal intervals, quantiles, and natural breaks. These are by no means the only data classification methods, but are the most commonly used ones in geographic information system software. Let's take a look at a little more detail at each one using the data sets I previously showed you for the classed and unclassed maps, which come from the US Census Bureau. Here's a sample of what these data look like as a raw table. Each record or row in the table represents a census tract polygon. In this example, we're gonna look at how to make a classed map based on the raw counts of owner-occupied census tracts. What we're going to do is divide these individual data records into classes for making geographic maps. I also want to point out that I'm just going to show you raw counts, but later I'll briefly discuss the idea of normalization, which is a basic technique that is used to create meaningful comparisons of data records. In an equal interval classification, data are assigned to classes where there is an equal range of values in each class. Each class will likely contain a different number of features or observations, but the range between each class will be the same. Equal interval maps are particularly useful for showing outliers in a given data set. For example, in this map, note how most of the values are falling into the first two classes, hence the uniform color representation in the map, except for this spot where there is a high level of owner-occupied housing thus revealing an outlier within the overall data set. In a quantile or percentile classification, data are assigned to classes where there is an equal number of observations or features in each class. Each class will contain the same number of features, but the range between each class will vary. Note in the histogram for the quantile classification how more observations are assigned to the darker color classes as the quantile method puts an equal number of observations in each data class. Quantile representations are particularly good for ranked data, such as ordinal data. In a natural breaks data classification, data are subjectively assigned to classes based on where a natural break in the data values present themselves. The natural break method attempts to minimize the differences between values in the same class 
and maximize differences between the overall classes. Each map is based on the same underlying data, but looks significantly different based on the data classification method used to make each map. Keep this in mind as you start using geographic information system software tools to make thematic maps and be very careful and critical of the particular method that you are using. To further illustrate these points, here's another series of maps that compare the three methods so you can also see how the same underlying data set will look different depending on the classification technique that is used. It is important when creating maps based on quantitative data to normalize maps so that the data being shown accurately reflect the underlying geographical situation. For example, showing data by U.S. census tracts is a common way to present quantitative data related to population indicators, like we saw previously with owner-occupied housing. However, census tracts can vary in size or may have overall large numbers of people, like in a city. Thus, comparing census tracts based on raw counts alone may not be meaningful and can be potentially misleading. Normalization is the idea of putting all of the data on some type of common measurement scale before presenting it on a map. For example, this map is showing owner occupancy in census tracts by raw count. In this map, the exact same data are shown using the exact same color scheme, except this time, the data are normalized by dividing the owner occupancy raw counts by the total number of people in each census tract. The legend for this map is showing a percentage of owner occupancy living in each census tract. This map gives a more accurate picture of the number of owner occupancy who live in each census tract, as in many cases, they are a high percentage relative to the overall census tract population, which cannot be easily determined using raw counts alone. Modern GIS tools like ArcGIS Pro or QGIS provide all of the capacity you will need for classifying geographic data in thematic maps. Remember to always take a critical eye to whatever data classification scheme you're using. As you've learned in this video, the same data set can look very different depending on the classification technique that is used. So it is very important that you understand what a given classification will do to a data set. Also, check out other videos on this channel to start building core geographic information systems or GIS software skills so that you can start creating compelling geographic visualizations. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.